Good morning all. There's new firmware available for the YZX Studio USB 3 power monitors, both the yellow and the red. And Frankie Tong, who sent me these monitors, has also now sent me through an ST programmer, which he also sells on his eBay store. And I'm going to attempt to follow his instructions, use the programmer to upgrade the firmware on these two monitors. So this is the programmer, it's called an ST-Link V2, suitable for STM8 and STM32 microcontrollers. And it's just occurred to me that this might also be uh, useful for upgrading the firmware on the um, JYE Tech oscilloscope, because that also uses an STM microcontroller. So it's supplied with a four-way uh, wire, female-to-female -female DuPont type connectors wire, and also these pogo pins which are little spring-loaded test pins. Now I have to make up a little uh, programmer assembly where I solder these onto a bit of Vero board and put a header pin on and then these push up against pads which are inside these monitors. Let's take a look at those pads. So this is the inside of the yellow monitor and you can see the four pins here with the square pin on the left. I'm pretty sure the square pin is ground but Frankie sent me a list of what these do. Uh, there's the ST microcontroller. Next to it is a memory. Um, it's either a flash or an E squared prom. And I've got a feeling this thing here is probably a MOSFET because the yellow device, you can have different routings for D plus and D minus. You can either pass them through or you can disconnect them or you can emulate on the output socket there um, D plus and D minus set to the Apple. Oh, what was it? 2.4 amp setting, I think. Um, so other notable things on here. Big low value resistor there. So that's obviously for measuring current. Looks like quite a nice branded one as well. Uh, there's a regulator up there. I think that's 3.3 if I remember rightly. Uh, the switch there, which is a side access switch. And a couple of rather nice looking uh, USB connectors. This one's the... Uh, female I guess it is and that one is the male. So I'm going to use this piece of strip board to uh, solder these four pogo pins on. I've got another piece of strip board up here just to sort of align them while I solder these. Let's see how that goes. Well it's not beautiful but it's probably good enough and so uh, this is just going to be my handle and then if you press those down you can see that uh, they're quite sharp. They make little indentations in my cutting mat. So now I'm just going to fit um, four of these pins here to the top of this. So Frankie says that starting with uh, the square pin on the left, it's ground. So I'll make that brown and it goes ground IO clock 3v3. So at the other end, ground IO clock 3v3. These are all marked. Uh, ground IO clock 3v3. Right, let's just plug those in. Now, Frankie said you have to hold the uh, assembly still while you program it. Well, I didn't really trust myself to do that, so I've wedged the whole thing into a drinking glass here, although that in itself was quite difficult. Uh, but I'm hoping those are all making contact. So now I plug in the uh, ST programmer, and I have to download some software, I believe. So here's the software and I've connected and it seems to be able to see the chip. So let's go target, program and verify, uh, what do I want, ST-Link and the yellow firmware. Let's open that, see if it works. Is it doing it? Ah, I have to start, start address, that, file path, yes, all of that stuff. Verify while programming or verify after. Well, let's do it while, why not? Restart after programming, start. Hmm, well, it seems to do something. Let's see if it works. Well, it seems to have worked because if I switch it on, we've got that original uh, display. Let's go through them. That's the second display. Now that's new, we're getting 999.99 uh, .99 ohms. So that's, what's that, 1K ohm? I can't remember what that was. We've got a temperature reading now, it's quite warm, 23.8. Uh, got the uh, various modes. 
and Frankie said that they'd taken my advice from my video where I said it'd be quite nice if these numbers stayed on the screen and it looks like they're going to. Let's just check that out. And yes, those numbers stay on the uh, display so that with your voltage or current line you can still see the uh, the voltage guide, I suppose it is. Okay, let's switch to the next screen, which is the current curve. Now I'm not drawing any current because I've got nothing on the output. But again, these numbers stay on the display. Well, I like that because <laughs> I was the one that suggested it. Now what else have we got? Oh yes, that's right. There's a big display of uh, voltage and current just with a large font. So presumably you can see this from a distance. And that's it. Those are all the uh, display screens. I'll have to uh, read up about what this one was again. I can't quite remember what all these details are. Now I've just taken the uh, bottom, I suppose it is, off the red one because uh, I'm going to program that next. And I just thought I'd show you the differences inside. It all looks pretty similar apart from at this end where the yellow one has this chip which can switch the D plus and D minus lines uh, into different configurations. The red one doesn't have that, but of course the microcontroller is looking at the voltages on the D plus and D minus lines. So I thought it was interesting just to see the differences between those two. That little SOT23.5 pin is also not present on the red one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and program the red now. And that's the red one done. And the displays are that original and power one, the amps, volts, and watts. This new one. Now, Frankie's given me a list of what these are. I'll briefly go through them. So we've got uh, equivalent resistance of the load. Well, there's no load connected, so that's just showing that. Temperature from inside the power monitor. Um, this is just a timer to tell you how long the thing's been plugged in. And I'm pretty sure that resets when you turn the power off. Let's just check that. Uh, power off, power on. Yes, that's just a resetting timer. And then this is a trickle charge current uh, threshold setting so that you can get the device not to accumulate charge when it's just putting out a very tiny trickle current. Uh, if you set that to zero, then of course it'll account for all charge that's flowing through the unit. The uh, voltages on D plus and D minus screen looks very similar. And then we've got my favorite screens the voltage and current curves. Now they've also done auto scaling here uh, so that this is currently reading between 4.9 and 5.5. You can see how this works, can't you? It moves off the screen and then it just jumps back a bit. Um, but apparently if you have higher voltages, and I could go and get that, um, that uh, QC 2.0 power bank and see whether this auto scales to the nine volts. Actually, I'll try that. Oh, and we no longer have Android. We now have Android, which is rather nice. Um, now, apparently, if you go into the large font screen, this one, and you press and hold, you get um, a screen flip, which is quite neat. Okay, so let's plug in the QC 2.0 power bank and see what happens. And it goes. Will it seem to reset the voltage curve? But that has now rescaled. That's interesting. As it rescales, it redraws the curve from the beginning. So it rescaled a few times there. But it seems to have settled at about well, 8 volts, somewhere between 7.9 and 8.1 volts. That's interesting. And I don't think it likes my socket here, because as I wiggle it about in the socket I get some quite dramatic changes in voltage. But definitely some uh, movement there when I wiggle this backwards and forwards. Interesting. Now let's switch to the uh, voltage and current screen. And there it is in the watts display. I've got 7.9 volts. The power bank's quite empty now. The QC2 power bank. So the voltage is uh, not holding at 9 volts very well by the look of it. 1 amp and about 8.5 watts. But I have noticed if I wiggle this thing in its socket, it's quite prone to changing all these numbers because of 
poor contacts probably in this rather nasty USB extension lead I'm using. But uh, yeah, there's the QC2 uh, stuff on the screen. So that seems to have been uh, successful. Now if I do, if I power on and then do a long press, it goes into settings and you can see here that it tells you the firmware version. So this is now version 2.5. There's even a QR code thing there. So this is the new firmware in the YZX Studio USB 3 power monitors. Now I'm told by Frankie that these monitors are now shipping with this new firmware. And uh, once again, I'll put links to these two units in the description for this video. And I'll also put a link to the uh, programmer here. You get the programmer and the pogo pins, but you will have to make up your own little Vero board uh, programming device. So let's just put the covers back on these two units, but uh, otherwise it's job done. Cheerio.